welcome to Portal 64, your gateway to girls revolutionizing the world. I'm your host, David, and today I'm going to talk to you about why you should watch Revolutionary Girl Utena, because, oh boy, this show is a trip. And re remember when I made that video about Alita Battle Angel a few months back? Well, get ready for that level of hype, because it, it, it's really good. It's really good, and I don't know why a lot more people don't talk about it. And I think part of it has to do because people at the surface level just say, oh, it's a shoujo, and just kind of brush it aside. But everyone that I've heard from that has watched the show holds it in super high regard and says it's like one of the best anime they've ever seen. And I honestly think more people should be talking about this show, because it is really really good and as my friend told me when i said oh i have no way to watch it she said you have no excuse because it's free on youtube and you know i just thought that meant like oh other people have uploaded the show no the studio itself has uploaded the show both sub and dub in its, in its entirety and i'm gonna link to that as an i card and in the description down below because you need to be watching that after you watch this video, please, please watch my video. What is Utena even about? So Utena opens up with a little story about a little girl whose parents had just died and she's too sad to face the world. And a prince comes to her and gives her a ring telling her, hey, this ring will help you find me later in life and like, don't give up, things will get better. And he just left, you know, cause that's what you do. You, you just leave a girl after giving her a ring, I guess. Anyway, this girl was so impressed by the prince, she grew up wanting to become a prince herself. And that girl was, you named it, Yatena. She just wanted to protect her friend Wakaba's honor, because Wakaba gave a love letter to Saonji, because, you know, why not, I guess, like a guy, because he has green hair and he's captain of the kendo team and he's on the student council, whatever. But he, he posts her love letter on a billboard for everyone to just laugh at. And Yutena is like, yo, that's not cool. I challenge you to a duel if you're so good at sword fighting. And him seeing that ring from the prince on her finger is like, ah, you're one of those people. Meet me in the Forbidden Forest after school. And she's, <laughs> she's like, um, okay, we're gonna get in trouble, but whatever. And she goes there, and oh, oh boy, that ring acts like a freaking VIP membership to get her into the secret club because there's there's a ring there there's this huge staircase and a fountain going up this tower and epic uh, apocalypse music starts playing and she goes marching up these stairs and he just pulls out like a magical sword out of this girl named Anthe and she's like hey uh, that's weird okay why are you using a real sword what the heck was that okay we're fighting and the rules of the duel are the same in every duel they they have a little rose on their chest that it's like whoever knocks the rose off the other person's chest wins she fights and against all odds wins and she's like cool don't post people's love letters on a billboards you dingus and she walks out of that duel being like well that's all in a day's work and anthe shows up and Anthony's like, hey, you remember me. Magic Sword got pulled out. I'm putting a lot more personality in this than she had in the scene, but whatever. And she, it's like, hey, uh, so you have won the duel, and now you have won me, the Rose Bride. We're engaged now. And <laughs> Yutena's like, whatever. Uh, that's weird. I'm just going to go. Peace. Uh, you're no one's property. Bye. <laughs> and uh, little did she know rules are rules and she has stepped into like a whole bigger plot than she had expected and throughout the series she has to duel uh for anthe against other people who are trying to win the rose bride and they're trying to win the rose bride because there's a power that they could gain through her and winning through the duels to revolutionize the world and it's never clear on what that is till the end because you know it's like the big series mystery is like what are these duels for what do they mean what do you gain from winning all the duels and you know anthe even though she's the rose bride doesn't give any answers to yutena at all and yutena is like cool i'm gonna be a prince i'm gonna protect you because you're like a princess and you're no one's property and you're gonna live a normal girl's life and that actually plays into one of the themes in Utena is going against, uh, you know, the damsel in distress, uh, and like being a girl in a fantasy is not always a good thing. Cause you see Anthe go through some 
tough crap, especially in the first episode. Well, the first episode is just a small taste of what you learn, what she goes through. And, oh boy, this show is revolutionary in so many ways. And I'm going to start off with the comedy at first, because, one, it's probably the least revolutionary part of the show. But, boy, do I miss old school anime comedy so much. The visual gags are hilarious and they're random and they're just they catch you off guard but they're like that's why they're so good is you you knew a joke was coming but you didn't expect it to come the way it did and it it's amazing i i love it there's a whole episode about nanami where um well there's a few episodes about nanami who is a girl that you're gonna hate her at her debut but because of episodes like the ones i'm about to mention you kind of start loving her because of what she goes through as a comic relief character which she's not a comic relief character but that's what ends up happening to her via karma and <laughs> oh man she goes through some of the funniest stuff in the entire show and then wakaba is always a cheerful hilarious character choo choo who i thought was a mouse at first until a few episodes later and they explicitly say he's a monkey he is also really funny and actually i'm gonna show a shadow play of me laughing at something that <laughs> happens with choo choo just randomly um, <laughs> Because, it, oh man, Choo Choo, bless him. Oh, no. And in every episode, we get oh, like a no. little skit by two silhouette girls, which are always really funny or interesting to watch. And they're also kind of like symbolic in the episode's theme. And a lot of the times you're probably going to have to like look up, hey, what did that skit in this episode mean? And how did it tie into the theme? Because, oh boy, this show, it's layered. And the silhouette girls are the perfect example because they're doing like a little play it's all nonsense and stuff but for a lot of those nonsense skits there's actually a connection to the overall story in it and oh man it, the show's this show takes such advantage of like hey we have a low budget but we're gonna make the use of like everything we got to like give just layers of meaning and i i guess that's part of why it's so revolutionary to me at least because at first you're like oh yeah yeah it's it's not that deep but as it keeps going and it kind of goes through a repetition which apparently was one of the themes of a lot of the metaphors i didn't learn about that till after uh, i finished the series and i was doing research to make this video but repetition is one of the themes and it's like what another thing that the show covers very heavily and symbolically is toxic masculinity with saunji and toga because they're very much trying to be men like masculine men but that always comes down as like a way that harms other people especially girls uh, the way they treat utena and anthe is very much like objects or uh, ownership and there's all sorts of other abuse toga is a major major d-bag he he goes through manipulating and using other people like pawns he he kind of uh tries to force mickey to go duel utena by sleeping with mickey's sister uh as a way to teach him that hey if you want something you gotta take it by force so you could protect it and uh you know i just kind of violated something you hold dear so to prevent anthe who is your friend very dear from her being violated in some shape or form you need to go win her in the duel and protect her in that sense and he 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 didn't really care about mickey winning but it is just the lengths he went to do that was like oh oh this show is um not your typical shoujo at all like yikes and he goes through some manipulation and he kind of ends up using some unexpected players against utena to just devastate her as well and that's that's just the first season this show goes very into like abuse in any shape or form i already mentioned anthe gets physically abused but you also see her get verbally abused she's already treated like an object through the games and she kind of like doesn't act like she has a will of her own she kind of like molds to whoever is the current dueling champion to kind of like you know fit their needs she doesn't care about herself because she doesn't see herself as valuable and she, she she's like the perfect example of like a abusive victim and it it's kind of heartbreaking and as someone who's like 
been in manipulative situations emotionally and romantically and have been verbally abused by a couple of friends quite a lot recently that I cut ties with, I related to this character as I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I know what this is. And uh, you, you even see Anthony get sexually abused and it it's all very heartbreaking and a touchy subject. And whenever I see videos or discussions on Utena, as I've been planning to make this video, no one really discusses that aspect of the show. And it, it is a very touchy subject so i get why people avoid it but i feel like it's one of the most important and strongest points in the entire show and yutena she's fighting against all of this the entire time but there comes a point when there's this one character who's a real smooth talker he's uh you know a very uh he comes off as a nice guy and you as the audience member is like yeah we really like this character but if i could describe this character in two words it is dramatic irony because at the end of the episode that introduces him you see him do something very shocking very monstrous and you go oh this guy is not who he appears to be but we the audience know that but Utena and other characters do not and the very next episode you see Utena just having a normal conversation with this person and you see her and this person kind of build a trust and a relationship and you're just like no 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 like stay away from this person but also at times when they're with her you're like yeah this character's a good person but then the show very quickly reminds you this is not a good person you go how do i how do i go through that like why do i keep forgetting about that or like why do i excuse the thing he did just barely three seconds ago you know it like not excuse but like you almost forget about it because it's almost like a different person and it's very shocking and sad to see that Utena falls for what she's been fighting for all along. And episode 33, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but you should brace yourself because, you, oh man, it, it, it goes very, it, it's, it shows itself as a recap episode, but there's little things that happen in between the recaps that stitch together into a story. And at the very end is a very, shocking and heartbreaking thing and then again in the next episode everything's acting as if it's normal again and you're just like what the heck and this show very much depicts abuse and abuse victims very well and i i think that's important for people to see as they might be in a situation like that and this show might be the thing that opens their eyes to like try to get help and get out of that situation whether it's like a friendship or a relationship or you know wherever i'm gonna include in the description like a hotline for domestic abuse uh just you know in case someone watches the show and goes oh hey like this is something i'm going through and like it, it could be very emotionally traumatic so it's like uh I feel like I'd be doing the show a disservice if I don't include that. So there's that for you. And I think, ironically enough, Utena, through trying to be a prince, shows a lot of like the positive aspects of masculinity, but she's still very feminine and a girl. And I, I love that about her, how she's breaking the gendered norms and is like, I'm a girl, but through my actions, I am a prince, which is usually a role held for boys. And it's it's really great. I, I love her. She's very revolutionary in multiple aspects. <laughs> and also, speaking of like breaking gender norms, this show is very revolutionary for representation for the LGBTQ plus community. And honestly, this show, just in the intro alone, puts She-Ra, Voltron, Ruby, a lot of shows to shame, like combined. You combine those shows and their representation together and then just toss it out a window because just the intro alone to this show, there's no straight explanation for it. Um, but it does explain, it does explore like adolescence and growing up and discovering oneself. And through that, you see Anthe and Utena kind of like, like form feelings for each other and it's it's really sweet and jury who's one of the student council members that utena has to duel against a few times she is a canon lesbian the first episode focused on her is all about like her motivations to like disprove miracles and 
you kind of learn why she doesn't think that and it, she was part of a love triangle and her best friend kind of left her for her other friend who was a guy and her best friend's like sorry i had to steal him away from you but you learn you learn that jury loved the girl all along and still does and you're like oh man that i that could be relatable to a lot of people i bet but this show does a lot of great a lot of great representation there's a male-on-male -male couple later in the series as well and there's a whole interesting story on that it's made in the 90s it's like how is this show more progressive than a lot of the shows coming out in the year 2019 so if if you're into that and you want a show where you could see yourself in that way utena obviously like it's it's honestly such a great show and there's there's so much symbolism in this show and metaphors that have to do with growing up abuse uh you know putting all the shoujo tropes on its head and like feminine uh i mean uh, feminism sorry not feminine but feminism <laughs> there, there's a lot of a lot of symbolic traits in it and you have to give it a few watch throughs to understand all of it or like me look up people's analysis of the episodes or the series as a whole and i'll be including a link to a few episodes uh, or a few other people's videos where they an analyze the show there's an article that talks about the symbolism of the rose bride but i recommend reading that after you finish the series as it does kind of spoil a later episode and a number of things there's a video about uh the symbolism of like growing up in utena and there's there's a lot of a lot of stuff in utena that's just really packed in there and it's really hard to grasp all of it in the first wash through and honestly i think it's impossible to see everything that is trying to teach and represent in the first watch through because a, a lot of it is just layered like there are multiple meanings to a lot of things and oh boy like like you're gonna see a butterfly quite a bit in this in uh like season two that butterfly has a lot of symbolism to it but it, it i never figured it out by watching the show i had to look it up online or there's also like mickey he has a stopwatch what's the symbolism of the stopwatch what does it mean and so there's also a video on that that i guess i should be linking to is mickey's stopwatch because that's an interesting watch in itself um <laughs> get it stopwatch watch please go watch utena i'm already linking to the series down in the description and as an icard you can watch it here on youtube for free the studio put it up and if you have seen it please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments down below and let me know what other old classic anime that are easy to access do you recommend that i watch or other people watch and if you like my video please give it a thumbs up share and subscribe and as always i will Boop you next time.